Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am Dr. Jones, and I'm your host for this afternoon. Woo, hallelujah, because I'm excited about the Word of God. We're talking about today, Christ has made you free. Woo, hallelujah. Christ has made you free. So you need to know that so you can stay in his freedom that he has blessed us with as his children. That's part of our package. Freedom, freedom, freedom. So I'm reading from the New King James Bible. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn to the uh, Gospel of John, chapter number 8. We're going to start off with verse number 31, which says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And what? And the truth shall make you free. Woo! Glory to God. It's nothing like being in the freedom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And while you're in that same chapter, look at verse 36. It says, what's it there for? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, woo, he said, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love walking in his freedom. There's just nothing like it. Glory to God. Now, are you at peace or prison in your mind? Uh, that's a question. Are you at peace or prison in your mind? There are people in jail that are free within their minds than people who are walk the streets free every day. They are literally in prison within their own minds. Ooh, what is your choice? Peace or prison? Balls in your park. <laughs> I know that um, my sister-in-law and I, we used to go down to the Twin Towers on Sundays, and we would minister to the uh, ladies that were incarcerated, and we would share with them the word of God. I tell you, there are some women that were in there during that time, as I stated here, that they were more free within their minds than those, as stated here, that walk the streets of L.A. and are, and there are, even though they are free, they are at prison within their minds. They're bound. But it's nothing like knowing that God has already made us free and that we can walk in that freedom. However, we have to do things his way and not our way. A person can experience a positive or negative e effect towards his or her own choice based on whether the choice is to be at peace, which produces freedom, or to be in prison, which produces confinement. It is like the wet that goes with the water. <laughs> it is a fact. God and his infinite mercy has made man to be, be a free moral agent. And he gives him the opportunity of his own free will to choose or make choices based on information and facts received. Along with man's determination, he will then willingly willfully make choices good, bad, or indifferent. Remember this, Jesus cannot and will not violate or override man's will. He, he won't do that. He can't do that because as stated, God has made every individual, as, as I read a little earlier, a free moral agent. So what does that mean, Dr. Jones? Well, you have an opportunity because I have a free will. I, I make my determination of what I want to do. And God can't take or change that fact. That ball is in man's park. Now, if he does not override man's will, he will not allow or 
anyone else to make choices on behalf of another man, person, or thing. You need to know and have understanding. Let's turn now to the book of Deuteronomy. I'm so happy to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has made us free. That is a wonderful blessing. Oh, you should be very excited to know that. However, as I had stated, we have to learn how to do things God's way and just not our way. And when we line up with his plans and purposes, oh, what an exciting life we can live. Over in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 30, I'm going to start off with verse number 19. It says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. So there again, he has given us the opportunity to, to make a choice. Understand this. Whatever choice we decide to make, which I already, we already stated that God cannot uh, violate man's will. He has to stand there and watch you make, if you make a wrong choice, then you have to suffer the consequences of that choice. Always remember to whatever choices that we make, there will be a consequence of that choice, good, bad, or indifferent, but that's on us. God made a choice not to make man a puppet on a string. However, he made man in his own image after his likeness, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is all, this is good as it gets. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when he has made man in his image, Let's go now to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, and chapter number one. I'm so excited about the word of God. I'm so excited to know, to, to have his wisdom, to have his guidance, to have his direction in all areas of my life. And I sure give it to him. <laughs> I ask for his help all the time. All right, Genesis 1, look at uh, verse number 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. That's what he said. So we are made in the image and the likeness of almighty God. Well, what or who is God? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to the Gospel of John chapter number 4 which tells us the fourth chapter, Gospel of John, and we'll look at verse 24, fourth chapter, verse 24. And it tells us that God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, well, Dr. Jones, how is man made in the image and likeness of Almighty God? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got an answer for you. Turn with me now to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, and we want to look at chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we will look at verse number 23. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read that again. Now may the God of peace himself, he's the God of peace, sanctify you completely and may your whole 
spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that when man receives and confesses Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, your spirit, the real you, is what is born from anew, born from above. All right? Now, the soul of man contains your will, your intellect, your emotions. That's, and your mind, <laughs> okay? Your soul, the soul of man contains your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Your body, your physical body, is what I see of you and what you see of me. So, we are made in the image and likeness. So, we're talking about your whole spirit. That is, when you receive Jesus, Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Your spirit is born anew or born from above. Your soul, which contains your mind, the will, your intellect, and your emotions, and your physical body. Man is what is considered a tripartite being. That, that's what we're talking about. The spirit, the soul, and body. And so when we're saying what the, the scripture tells us over in Genesis, let us make man in our image, in the likeness. We have God the Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the three, the, twin, the trinity. So that's how we are made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Isn't that wonderful? It's an exciting life that we have and live. Question. Okay, we already talked about that. Who or what is God? We found out that God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We, all, we just discussed that about your spirit, uh -huh, the, uh, your soul, which contains your mind, will, intellect, and emotions, and the physical body. So we just went over that aspect. Now, let's make it where you can understand further. Man, okay, we already went over that. Man consists of the three parts, just like God. He's the Son of God, God the Father, Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Now, Christians need to understand that the Word of God is spiritual and can only be discerned by one spirit. Turn with me uh, to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, and we want to go to chapter number 2. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll look at verse number 10, and uh, which the word tells us, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely, hello, freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. These things we also speak not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural mind, or natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Oh, but we know. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, as stated, in order for the man to really live a successful lifestyle in Christ Jesus, your mind of necessity must be renewed. Let's look now, Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. It's so important to know these things and to, we have our part to do and begin to act on it. 
All right, Romans 12, look at verse number one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we have to get our minds renewed and acclimated to the word of God. That is so very, very important. And there again, that's why the message of faith is so vitally important to be taught because we have to receive these things by faith based on what God's word says. I love it. I love it. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. All right. Turn with me. Oh, by the word of God. Yes, you got it. This is the reason, you yeah, know, okay, I just stated about why faith is so vitally important to be taught. Now, let's go to the book of Hosea, and uh, we want to look, Hosea chapter number four, Hosea chapter number four. Thankful for the word of God, for the truth of what God's word t uh, declares and speaks to us. Amen. It's an exciting, exciting life. That's Hosea 4 and number 6. And it says, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. M man, uh, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So that's why we have to get the word of God, the truth of what God's word says. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, this is a oh, this is so good. I love it. <laughs> it's exciting. Now, uh, man without information can and will be destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Information is knowledge, and knowledge is power. Can you feel? <laughs> can you feel me? Okay, yeah. Knowledge is power. Man needs to know to or learn to think God's, how God thinks. How does God think about man? Glad you asked. Got an answer for you. Let's look now or go with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 29. How does God feel or how does he think of us? Oh, he thinks good thoughts. He has good plans in store for us his children. However, we have to be uh, willing to accept it and begin to act on it. Over Jeremiah chapter 29, let's look at verse number 11 here, 11 through 13. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me, and I and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and when you search for me with all your heart. Isn't that blessed? I love it. I love it. So God has nothing but good thoughts for his children. He has the best of plans in store for us, and all we have to do is receive it and begin to walk in it. You see, but he can't make us do it. That's a free will choice to purpose, to line up with his plans and purposes that he has for us. Glory to God. I believe that everyone has a belief system and believes something. I also believe that everyone has the free will of choice. A person's choice can be experienced by two ways. That is... One can make a choice by saying something verbally or by not saying something. Either way, a choice will be made. Something to think about. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. But like I said, the ball is in man's park. We have to be willing to want to do things God's way and not our way. And when you think about Doing things the way the Father would have us to do is the best way. 
It makes life so easy in, uh, to live. We have to learn how to walk the walk and talk the talk, be the doer of the word of God and just not the hearer only. But that's a choice that we have to make. And especially if you want to please our Heavenly Father, you have to, like I say, be the doer. Follow his plans and purposes. And as I stated, he has nothing but good things in store for us because he loves us. I mean, when he went to Calvary and he paid that ultimate price on the behalf of mankind, not because he felt like it, but he knew that he needed to do this as unto his father. Even over, turn with me in Matthew, Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter 26. Because we have so much to be thankful for. Our father loved us so much. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his own self on our behalf so that we could live a good and a blessed life. Matthew 26, and we want to look at verse number 38. It says, this is Jesus. Then he said to them, Jesus, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Oh, that's awesome. He did that family for us. Oh, we have so much to be thankful for. And look at that 42nd verse. And then it says again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, my, me, nevertheless, I drink it. Your will be done. That's because he loved us or loves us so very much. Oh, man. He said, oh, Father, I'll do this on the behalf of mankind. And when they took him and he hung on that cross and they pierced his sides, it was the blood and the water that came gushing out. The word tells us over in... Um, Isaiah in 52 that he was so marred that he was beyond human recognition. That's deep, but he did that. He paid it for us. I want to take this time and extend an um, altar call, uh, invitation. If you'd be so kind, just to pray, repeat after me. Dear God, your word says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, I receive you now. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sins. I thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Oh, I thank you. I rejoice. I am excited. I am your child. So hello, brother. Hello, sister. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Now, OCN would like to hear from you. You can take a time and, and, and uh, drop a letter and let them know that you received Jesus today. If you are in need of prayer, Look at the, the screen, a telephone number you can call, and someone will be more than glad to pray with you. We want to thank you for tuning in today. I have been your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. We will see you for the next time. I love you. Bye for today.